eLive is a Linux distribution based on Debian that features a great implementation of the Enlightenment desktop environment. It's a distro that is self-proclaimed as not being aimed at one particular kind of user, but one that is primarily designed to be used on very old computers. The default ISO image is 32-bit and installs with Linux 3.16 by default. It uses just a hair over 160 megabytes of RAM and runs beautifully with one CPU core and zero 3D acceleration. This allows eLive to tout itself as capable of turning a 15-year-old computer into one of high performance, and I quite honestly believe it. In this eLive review, we'll discuss system performance, usability, and why it may or may not be the distro for you. First impressions. On first boot, you're greeted with a fairly spartan desktop, but you quickly realise that things are not as simple as they seem. Things immediately feel very snappy, even in a heavily limited virtual machine like I was running it on. I gave it access to one core of my CPU and one gigabyte of RAM with no 3D acceleration, and while it gave me a quick warning about that, I was easily able to work through the desktop and find my way around. Some of the elements of the desktop feel a little bit more retro than I'm really used to, like things like the icon theme having an iPod for rhythm box and the look of the desktop context menu, but you get used to it fairly quickly and find your way around. I could absolutely see this being comfortable and nostalgic on an older machine, and I may just have to dig up my old Dell Inspiron 6000 from 2005 and try this out on there. Installation Overall, the installation process was slightly overwhelming. If you saw our review of Endeavor OS, we were critical of their installer for their treatment of swap space. I have some slightly negative things to say about the eLive installer as well. When you first open the installer, you're greeted with a screen that isn't exactly clear on what you need to do. It's easy to just click OK and move on. However, for those who aren't advanced users, I suggest checking the guided help during the installation checkbox. Leave the other two checks so you still have choices and then click one of the top two options for whether it's allowed to take the full disk or you're trying to make a dual boot. Then choose your partitioning scheme, choosing between automatic, a G-parted window or an option for whether you pre-partitioned your disk. You may get helpful prompt like I did to confirm that I wanted to erase my entire disk and install eLive, which is quite nice. The file system selector was quite confusing. While I know the difference between ext4 and resurfs, the choice to present those two options is mystifying. My suggestion is to use ext4, obviously. After choosing your file system, your encryption preferences and etc., the install begins. After the install, configure your installed system. This is where I feel very critical of the install. In the hands of anybody but an advanced user, the options here are likely to overwhelm and confuse the user. You have to deselect things that you don't want in your system. I understand why the choices are this way, but it's a lot to have to deal with after a supposedly successful installation of your system. There are six extra options menus that you have to navigate in order to get to the final part of the installation. It feels a little excessive, and I think those could be logically organized into a couple of groups to have one menu with a few checkboxes. Performance and user experience. Once a system is installed, the performance is really, really good. With a desktop environment as fully featured and efficient as Enlightenment, I wouldn't expect anything less. Enlightenment lives somewhere in the middle of tiling window managers and light desktop environments like XFCE in terms of system resource usage. And this particular implementation has been very heavily optimized to work on computers just about as old as you could possibly have in your home. Nothing feels sacrificed either. It feels like I'm using the desktop environment that I want XFCE or LXDE to to be. It's really quite a treat. The user experience is a little overwhelmed by choice. I feel I have so much I can do to learn and customise that I'll be sucked into an endless void of eLive, but that's kind of the beauty of it. I could absolutely see a world in which you install this on a 15-year-old laptop or an 11-year-old desktop and mess around with it for hours, just happy to see the machine that you played on games on while growing up works again. That said, I wouldn't necessarily recommend eLive to a beginner, not by a long shot. It comes with ZSH as the default shell. The choices and customization options are near endless and it's old enough that Linux 3.16 living in our new world can get a little bit strange. However, there's a lot of really great things about it. And if you're so inclined, there's a fairly bustling community and plenty of really great documentations available for you to learn more. Plus the interface looks really integrated and well designed and clear. I think we all have a couple of machines lying around that can benefit absolutely from eLive being installed on them and upgraded with an SSD. I would wholeheartedly recommend this to a retro PC enthusiast who's looking to keep their old machine alive and well into 
the future. Please make sure to check out some of our other performance-focused Linux articles and learn how to speed up your Linux desktop with Compton. Check out a review of Arch Linux and find four of the best web browsers for Linux. Links to all of that in the description. Okay, as always, thank you so much for watching. That's all for now. See you next time. Thank you.